This one is going to be the first one in a series of videos about building my compact table saw. And in this one I'm going to show you how I built the motor unit. For the motor of the saw I used one of my circular saws. This is a very good circular saw but I never used it so I decided to recycle it for this little table saw. In fact this is the very circular saw that I used in my very first homemade table saw. It's been in there for a couple of years and hasn't seen a lot of use since. If I didn't have a circular saw to spare I would have gotten one with a broken base off of eBay. For the blade lift mechanism I decided to go with a block that is traveling horizontally, being pushed by a piece of threaded rod as a crankshaft, and to use a link to translate the block's linear motion into rotary motion of the motor mount. This has three main advantages. The crankshaft stays horizontal, the blade cannot pull itself up because the motor mount is attached to the linear block with a solid link, and the whole thing is very strong and compact without a lot of nuts and bolts sticking out all over the place. After conducting my very sophisticated simulation process, I made a template out of MDF. I used Baltic birch plywood for its strength and stability. It consists of a lot of cross laminated layers of veneer which keeps the wood from expanding and contracting with seasonal humidity. Plus, stuff that's made out of Baltic brush plywood is basically indestructible. MDF on the other hand... After roughing out the pieces with my jigsaw, I flush cut them to the template using a flush cut bit in my router. The middle layer was slightly modified to create space for the link. For gluing this up I need some kind of a flat surface and I'm simply going to use the table of my pantry router. Now if you don't have a pantry router you're basically screwed. You're not going to build that saw. With those towels I made sure that the pieces wouldn't start sliding all over the place during the glue up. For the next steps I improvised a saw table using an upside down circular saw. Luckily this machine doesn't yet have the baby safe trigger. And I prepared the pieces for the linear block.
After drilling the holes, I chiseled one side hexagonal to accept an M16 nut. Next I prepared all the axles from some rusty piece of steel shaft that I had lying around. And I reamed out all the holes to a perfect fit using a reamer that I made out of the same piece of steel shaft. Now I need to make the box that goes around the motor mount and I'm gonna rough cut my pieces first using the jigsaw and then I'm gonna rip them using the table saw. <clears throat> the improvised upside down circular saw thingy please. And now with a straight piece of plywood and the same flush cut bit in my router, I can square off these pieces. Before I screw this box together, I still need to route the channel for the ball bearings. Using all these ball bearings was probably a bit overkill. I think just a spline sliding in a groove would have worked adequately. But who cares? This makes the operation extra smooth. And I drilled holes into the cast housing of the saw and screwed it into place. A lot of the comment experts always like to point out how I should really use an Acme spindle for an application like this because of the low pitch and the lack of durability of that threaded rod. But in reality this is absolutely fine. Okay, the mechanism for raising and lowering the blade is done. And next comes what I think is the hardest part about this entire project. The trunnions 
for tilting the saw blade. But that's gonna be the topic of another video.